The entire city of New Orleans is without power following the arrival of Hurricane Ida to the U.S. Gulf Coast. The Category 4 storm brought powerful winds after making landfall in the state of Louisiana, damaging power lines as it moved inland. Forecasters say the storm could bring a potentially catastrophic tidal surge and major flooding in its wake. It's not just the harsh winds. As Hurricane Ida plows into Louisiana, the storm brought torrential rain and a tidal surge to the Gulf Coast. Thousands of residents followed an evacuation order issued before Ida's arrival. Those who stayed behind have been told to shelter in place. Ida maintained its intensity even after hitting land. Government officials said the storm would push the people of Louisiana to their limits. There is no doubt that the coming days and weeks are going to be extremely difficult for our state. And many, many people are going to be tested in ways that we can only imagine today. Uh, but I can also tell you that as a state, we've never been more prepared. The slower a hurricane moves, the more rain falls in the same place and Ida is in no rush to continue its journey inland. With the storm moving slowly, the rain is flooding cities and the wind has cut power to hundreds of thousands of homes. But officials are ready to move in as soon as the storm weakens. We've already pre-positioned resources that we know are going to be needed and equipment and response teams in the region. This includes 2.5 million meals, three million liters of water. We've got generators in place and we're in close touch with the power providers to get and restore power as soon as possible. Emergency officials say it will take time before they can assess the damage, but parts of Louisiana may be uninhabitable for weeks or even months. And DW correspondent Oliver Salat is in the region that's bearing the brunt of Hurricane Ida. He sent us this update. This is what meteorologists have called the strongest hurricane to hit Louisiana in 160 years. And Hurricane Ida battered the city of New Orleans with winds of up to 150 miles per hour. And officials urged residents who did not evacuate to remain sheltered in place, calling this a potentially life-threatening storm. And now those who sheltered in place, who stayed at home, are facing other problems because nearly the whole city of New Orleans is effectively without power. It's a giant power outage uh, that affects more than one million people here in the area. And in addition to that, we have seen collapsed houses, the fire department reported, of people trapped inside, um, roofs that were blown away, the whole Louisiana coastline experiencing a catastrophic storm surge followed by a tornado watch. And all of this is happening 16 years after Hurricane Katrina killed 1,800 people just here in New Orleans. Um, and of course, the impressions we're getting are dramatic. And in spite of that, city officials expressed confidence in the flood protection system that underwent a 14 billion US dollar upgrade after Hurricane Katrina. And of course, now all hopes are that the levees will hold this time around. And for the very latest now, I'm joined by Matthew Capucci. He's a meteorologist for the Washington Post. Thanks for being with us. Matthew, how strong is this storm? Well, the good news, this was a smaller storm in terms of size than Hurricane Katrina, but that said, it was more feisty in terms of the wind. Winds gusting upwards of about 250 kilometers per hour make it the eighth strongest storm to ever hit the United States in terms of the continental U.S., so a remarkably potent system. One of the big issues now, though, even though the winds have subsided a little bit, heavy rainfall bringing huge problems in the New Orleans metro area with upwards of 25 centimeters having fallen on the Big Easy itself. Now, the levees you mentioned earlier on, they're holding back the seawater, but they're trapping the rainwater. And because the entire city is without power, they can't really pump that water out. So it's a flash flood emergency for that city. Talk to us about the storm's path, Matthew. Who's most at risk? New Orleans was very lucky because the storm passed only about 45 kilometers off to the west. Had that eye well come a little closer to the city, 
instead of winds gusting to about 140, they might have doubled that. So we were very fortunate there. Right now, tracking a little bit to the west, but eventually we'll curve through Mississippi and up to the Tennessee Valley and ultimately the Mid-Atlantic region later on this week. The threat shifts from damaging winds to more of heavy rainfall, possible flooding, and isolated tornadoes. We saw that tornado watch in effect for the Louisiana metro area. Uh, ultimately, a couple little spin-ups are possible thanks to all the rotational energy associated with that system. Ultimately, it, it has to go somewhere. And so hurricanes tend to spin down into smaller storms capable of producing tornadoes. Now, all of this is happening, of course, 16 years to the day after Hurricane Katrina devastated New Orleans. More than 1,000 people were killed there. Is it clear that that kind of destruction can be avoided this time, Matthew? I think back in 2005, after Hurricane Katrina, the city officials did a good job. They invested about $16 billion worth of money into infrastructure, trying to make sure the levees would hold, and this time they did. Now, that said, Katrina was simply a different beast. About 20 hours before its landfall in 2005, it was a Category 5 storm, and it was so big that it pushed way more water ashore. This storm, Ida, really intensified at the last minute, kind of got us act together as it was moving ashore, so it didn't have as much time to push that water ashore and it had a smaller footprint. So while the surge was less significant, probably about three, four meters, still very formidable, we just didn't really have that test that Katrina would have given if it occurred again. So we're very fortunate this time around that it wasn't worse. But that said, considering the winds, considering the rainfall, it's a serious impact. And I think New Orleans will be cleaning up for quite some time. Matthew, thank you so much. That was meteorologist Matthew Capucci.